Hey guys, my name is Tom, and welcome back to another devlog. In this one, I'm going to make a player model and remove client prediction from the project. Alright, so it's been a week since the last devlog, and I haven't worked on the project since then. However, this time it's not because I procrastinated, but because I'm in the process of moving into a different room in the house, and that's just been taking a while. By the end of this week, I'd like to have a player model done, and I'm going to strip out client prediction. So I just spent the last 20 minutes making an absolute unit of a player model. This abomination definitely won't survive the next couple days, but my main goal here was to get the proportions somewhat figured out. I think I managed to do that vertically, but horizontally it's still a big mess, so I'm going to keep working on this. Just a quick progress update on Wednesday evening here. I continued working on the player model, and I started using my own body as a bit of a reference, and I've gotta say, it already looks way better. However, there's still a ton of work to do, especially on the feet and the head, so this will probably end up being a very time-lapse heavy devlog. Mimicking human anatomy in 3D space is hard, and I'm guessing the face will be really difficult to get right. With that in mind, I don't think I'll get around to adding clothes this week, but at least that'll give me some time-lapsable content for future videos. To anyone who's wondering why I'm not using reference images within Blender, it's because I prefer to freehand things. It might take a bit longer, but in the end I usually end up with something I'm really happy with, and it feels like it's actually my work, not as though I simply traced it. I'm not sure if that makes any sense, but I feel like it gives me more freedom to add my own style to the model. Anyways, what I've got now looks pretty good, although the fact that I haven't overhauled the feet and head really makes the rest of the body appear messed up. It's Thursday afternoon now, and I've done quite a bit of work on the feet and the head, and it's already looking much better. As I expected, the face turned out to be the most difficult part, and so far there's no ears, mouth, or eyes. Actually, I did add some really janky eyes and a mouth, just to get an idea of what it might look like, and, well... Let's just say I'm horrified and strangely fascinated all at once. For obvious reasons, these facial features won't be sticking around for long, but I'll need to dispose of them properly. Burning them at the stake seems like a good option. Anyways, I can't look at this any longer, and there have already been way too many modeling time lapses in this devlog, so I think it's time to remove client prediction now. 
In case you don't know, client prediction is a method used to hide input latency in multiplayer games. Without it, many games would feel extremely unresponsive because when you press a key that input is sent to the server, the server moves your player object accordingly and then sends your position back. Once your game client receives that position update, you'll see your player move, but depending on your connection speed, a noticeable amount of time may have passed between you pressing the key and seeing yourself move. This is a big problem because no one likes playing unresponsive games, and to hide the latency, clients are often given the ability to predict their own movement based on the inputs that they're sending to the server. An unhacked client's predictions will generally match the server's calculations pretty well, but to deal with small amounts of divergence, games usually also implement client reconciliation. That's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. If the client's prediction differs from the server's calculation, the client reconciles the two states in a way where the player notices as little as possible. I've been working on prediction and reconciliation for a while now, and while it wasn't easy to implement, it wasn't absurdly difficult either, at least on land. The fact that my game has ships which players can stand and walk around on poses a massive problem to the prediction system because the client sees ships in the past compared to the server. This means that the client often has a different starting position for the player than the server, and this results in extremely fast divergence between the simulations. That in turn causes extreme jittering and rubber banding, which makes for a terrible gameplay experience. I'm not entirely sure how to get around this, and last week I decided to remove my prediction code and set it aside for now. Just repeatedly smashing my head against this wall isn't going to do much, and as I thought about it, I realized that prediction is technically a quality of life improvement. It's been sucking the enjoyment out of development for me, and while having a game that feels a bit unresponsive isn't great, it's certainly better than not having a game at all. At this stage in the project, I think it's much more important to get some core gameplay going because that will help me nail down my vision for the whole thing. Plus, once I get some kind of early beta out, the project will become much more tangible, if that makes sense. At the moment, no one is benefiting from the work I'm putting in. These devlogs keep me somewhat accountable since I can't really make a devlog if I haven't done any development, but it's still indirect accountability. I think once I've got people directly interacting with the progress I make, it'll be much easier to stay motivated and push to find a solution to my prediction problem. To be clear, removing prediction is 100% temporary. At some point in the future I'll be coming back and re-implementing it, or some sort of alternative to make the game feel responsive. This does mean that the Trello board is going to need some reorganizing, so I'm going to do that and then remove prediction from the project. Prediction has been removed, which means we can walk on the ship again. Controls are slightly unresponsive now, but it feels really good to know that I don't need to deal with this stuff anymore. At least not in the near future. With that taken care of, there's just two tasks left in this column of the Trello board. However, I think I'm going to take care of player animations bit by bit so I can spread time lapses out between devlogs. The same thing goes for clothing and modifications to the player model. Unless of course you guys really enjoy time lapse heavy videos, in which case you should let me know in the comments. I also took a moment to put the player model to use, so when looking at other players you won't see a blue capsule anymore. Instead you'll see this. Anyways, I need to start editing this thing, so that'll be it for this devlog. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to destroy the like button, as it really helps out the channel. Next time, I'll make the holes in ships visible, and then I'll start working on some more interesting stuff. Maybe harpoon guns. Also, if you'd like to join me as I build this multiplayer game, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. With that said, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again next Saturday with another video.